Hi, I'm Dan Pagliero, Certified Consulting Meteorologist and President of Paghor Solutions in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Today I'm going to show you how to install a rain gauge using this model of rain gauge, which is the Climolytic Instruments rain gauge, which is approved for use on the Kokoros network. Kokoros stands for Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network, which is a network of volunteers who use standardized equipment to report precipitation at their locations. Those reports are used by the National Weather Service for weather and climate prediction purposes. This current rain gauge that we have right here is an upgrade of the previous uh, version of rain gauge that was used in the Kokoros network, which are still being used, they're still approved, but uh, this is actually an approved version that had come out within the last few years. And today we're going to replace our previous rain gauge. As you can see right here, we had this installed in 2011, and this right here was the original version of that rain gauge. And as you can see, the reason why we're going to install it is that, you know, after 11 years or 12 years of wear and tear, you can see that the surface of it here, you can't really see through it anymore. It's starting to crack. Uh, and of course, uh, this gauge right here has reached the end of its life. And so this being the original version, uh, you can see it has an inner tube, much like this uh, new version. Uh, again, it measures uh, up to w one inch of precipitation inside the inner tube, uh, measured in one, one hundredths of an inch. And uh, I think the outer uh, tube here, I think, actually goes up to five inches, as opposed to this model right here, now goes up to 13 inches on the uh, outer tube. So uh, this new one has a better capacity, also a much better design as well here too. So one of the things you'll notice on here that this new gauge has, it actually has these little metal rods, um, which are actual bird spikes to actually keep birds from sitting on top of your uh, rain gauge and using it as a bath or for uh, other things that birds do. So uh, we'll uh, get moving along here with our installation and uh, before we actually do that, we'll see some of the mounting hardware that we have right here. So this is the uh, mounting bracket for the uh, for the new rain gauge that we're going to be installing. And then it has a really nice convenient handle that you can attach on there as well if you ever wanted to take the gauge off of its mount and uh, perhaps bring the gauge inside when you have snow accumulation in there and you need to melt the snow. You could actually stick the handle on there, bring it inside, melt the snow, measure it, and then bring it back out and put it back on the mountain. So one of the big challenges that we have when trying to figure out where to put a rain gauge is to where to properly site it. The first thing you want to do is have it in an open area. And, you know, ideally you want to have it in an area where the where it's going to be about twice the distance of the height of the nearest object. So for example, if you have a tree that's 20 feet, you want to have it 40 feet away from that tree. Uh, in a suburban to urban setting like we are here on the east side of Albuquerque, it's a little bit hard to do that because uh, as you can see, we're in a fairly well-developed neighborhood here. Um, it, it's going to be really hard to, uh, get, to, to get really that optimal uh, distance away from those uh, tall objects that we have around us. So uh, in, in that sense, when you're in a developed area like this, you just got to do your best you know, to get it into as much of an open area as you can. Uh, a rule of thumb here is though too, is if you're out in an open field uh, in a rural area, uh, typically you want to have the gauge mounted at about uh, two to three feet above the ground. Uh, over in a more developed location, you want to have that gauge uh, mounted about five to six feet, which, uh, as you can see, we are going to do uh, right here on this uh, block wall here. We're going to place our gauge, and this uh, wall here is about uh, five feet, and where we have this mounted, it'll probably put it at about six feet. So, 
We'll uh, go ahead and get started with our installation here, but to do that, we'll actually begin by removing the old rain gauge here. And so this actually should be relatively easy. We'll just take the uh, old gauge down and start taking it out you know, one piece at a time. This has actually been sitting in here a while, so uh, we'll uh, inspect it here, make sure that you know everything is still in relatively good shape. But then again, you can see the surface uh, of this has actually got a lot of uh, uh, sun damage. It's becoming brittle, and you can't even see you know through it anymore to actually look at what the precipitation readings are. So uh, that was one of the reasons why we're upgrading our our gauge today. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take off the old mounting bracket. So we have our uh, drill here, which we'll take those out, take out the screws. All right, and what we're going to do for our new gauge is we're going to use the exact same mounting location as we had for the old gauge. So that makes it fairly easy here because we're just going to reuse the same mounting equipment here. Um, we're going to use this little bracket right there to mount our rain gauge. And first, before we do that, we want to make sure that the gauge is level. We want to make sure it's level. We want to identify also where we're going to put our holes for our screws. So we'll uh, go ahead and get that set up. And this gauge actually has a really nice level here where you could actually uh, level it, make sure that it's uh, nice and plumb before you actually start drilling your holes. Okay, so now that we've got our holes marked, we're going to actually drill a couple of small pilot holes, which will actually make it a little bit easier for the screws to go in when we uh, start putting the screws in. And for that, I am going to use a, a 5 30 seconds bit to drill our pilot holes. You could probably use a 1 8 or something maybe a little bit bigger, but a 5 30 seconds I think would be plenty sufficient, I think, for the screws that we're going to put in. So we're going to get our drill set up and drill our pilot holes. Okay, now that we've got our pilot holes, we're now going to install the mounting bracket. And to install the mounting bracket, these screws were provided with the uh, gauge. So we're going to take these two screws, we're going to install this uh, mounting bracket right here. Okay, so we've now got that installed. We're now going to take our new gauge and it just slides in like so.
And now our new rain gauge is all set for use. And just a side note here uh, regarding the Cocross network. So, um, as I had mentioned previously, the Cocross network uh, uses standardized uh, rain measuring equipment, and this is one of the standard pieces that they use. And one of the reasons why they actually use these type of rain gauges and not uh, digital weather stations is because uh, digital weather stations, especially when there is small amounts of precipitation, uh, oftentimes uh, take a while to actually register uh, the precipitation. So if you're talking, you know, if about a 1 one hundredth, 2 one hundredths, maybe even 3 one hundredths of an inch of precipitation, a lot of times uh, most of your uh, digital weather stations uh, with the tipping bucket rain gauges will not register uh, those uh, precipit those small precipitation readings and yeah, of course you know that makes a big difference when you're trying to do uh, rain climatology for a given area and everything you know especially out here in New Mexico where we get very little rainfall to begin with and you know a few one hundredths of an inch of rain actually makes a significant difference out here so uh, you want to make sure that you get you know as accurate as you can and nothing is more accurate than these uh, old school rain gauges here so um, so yeah as much as I like uh, my digital weather station uh, there you know these actually do provide greater accuracy uh, when measuring precipitation uh, than your digital weather stations uh, another thing also too to bear in mind is that you know a lot of uh, major events or uh, movie uh, filming events will have will, will purchase what's called rain insurance and usually the threshold uh, for rain insurance uh, for it to pay out is usually like two one hundredths of an inch of precipitation in um, in the span of about 20 a lot of the digital rain gauges will not register that so uh, again uh, one of the reasons why even for uh, doing rain measurement for say a special event or a film shoot where rain insurance is in play that's why you would typically have a traditional rain gauge like the one that we have here and i hope you guys like the video and have a great day